Being a first-time caregiver can be overwhelming. It can be hard to know who to turn to for help and what to do to help the person that you're caring for. All right, starting the pump. Today we're going to meet Rob and his mom, Christine. Rob recently moved in with his mom after she had a bad fall. We're going to learn about their challenges and seek out advice from both within and beyond traditional healthcare fields to find practical solutions to improve the lives of caregivers and the people they care for. I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. Welcome to House Call. Rob, you recently moved in with your mom. So how did this happen? Mom went to Mexico on vacation last month and had a fall. And they did a couple emergency surgeries in Mexico. They didn't work out very well. So when she got home, she was in a lot of pain, had some problems. We took her to emergency and the pins and plates that they had put in to keep her bones stable had come out and actually ripped through her arm. The fancy metal contraption you see on her arm here is actually just keeping her arm stable while they clear an infection. And once that happens, she can have another surgery to actually repair her elbow. Well, we find out um, next week. He's going to have a look and see if he can put the plastic in now. Like an elbow replacement. Mm -hmm. Right. What was it like when you first found out that your mom was going to need more help? I didn't have a lot of information from Mexico. And when she got back, by the next morning, she was already in emergency. When I saw her there, I knew the situation was way worse than what people had been telling me. And when you made that decision to, to just move in with your mom for a little bit while she needs extra help, what was that decision-making process like for you? My whole life, my mom's always supported me, a uh, hardworking single mom. Anything I was interested in, you know, sports, skateboarding, snowboarding, that kind of stuff, she sacrificed everything to make sure that I could do that and have a good life. So when the tables turned and I had the opportunity to help her out, it was a no-brainer. As my mother, I'll do anything. Yeah, because I don't know where I would have ended up. And I'm, I'm sure I couldn't have kept Buddy, and there's no way. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you have? I'm really worried about how much stuff she has with her condition because she can't afford another fall right now. I think it's a big hazard on a bunch of levels, you know, for tripping, falling, health. I don't think it's sanitary and even just mental health. But we need to find a way to clean out some of the collection. Have you been collecting things for a long time? I've been traveling a lot, and so I kind of bring stuff back from everywhere. Now he calls me a hoarder without borders. <laughs> well, at least he's a locker. <laughs> and now let's talk a bit about the fall risk. I'm really worried that another fall right now would be very bad. Um, well, if I break it, they'd amputate. They said they would probably amputate if she had another injury. So what have you learned from this experience so far? Well, I'll get to spend time with my son. That, that's the biggie. If you don't have your family and your health, um, you know, you don't have anything. So it's really been an opportunity to reconnect and spend some time together and, and you know, just be a family again. One of the problems that Christine and Rob talked about is clutter. The city of Vancouver has a special team that deals with hoarding. Let's go see if they can help. Uh, I'm Doug Booth from the Vancouver Fire Department. I'm a captain in fire prevention, and one of my tasks is being a captain on the hoarding action response team. And tell me about what the team does. When we get a complaint of hoarding, we'll investigate it to see if it's a legitimate complaint. We approach the occupant and we ask them if they want our help and we involve mental health. We have a mental health team member who goes with our fire inspector. And why is hoarding a concern? Because of fire load. People can't get out in a hurry if there was a fire. And also our emergency responders can't come in to help that person. Clutter can have tripping hazards too. There's usually gonna be pests, especially if you live in an apartment building because pests have a way of traveling from unit to unit. You have some scales that you use for classifying clutter and hoarding. It's from one to nine, uh, nine being the worst. Um, almost up to the ceiling, and one being no issue, two, three is starting to be clutter. How would you counsel people who are at that level of clutter? In the city of Vancouver, we have the benefit of having a 311 call center. So anybody could pick up the phone, call 311, just like dialing 911, and hopefully they'll accept the help of our team. 
And if you're dealing with a family member and talking to them directly, just the, the family members should be understanding and respectful and not judgmental, uh, because that's not going to help them de at all. And, and they should never try and just forcefully declutter somebody's home. It'll get worse after that. It has to be done properly with the, with the proper mental health team. of great information from Captain Doug Booth about hoarding. Now, the other thing Rob and his mom Christine were concerned about is falls. We're here today at Simon Fraser University to talk to a researcher who works in fall prevention. Hi, I'm Kim van Schoten. I'm a postdoctoral fellow here at Simon Fraser University and I study falls in older people. Now we're working with um, Rob and his mom Chris, and Chris has had a lot of falls. She was recently in Mexico and she had a bad fall. What are some things she can do for fall prevention? Vitamin D, that's particularly for injury prevention, although there are some indications that it also has beneficial effects on muscles. And the types of exercises that are generally recommended for fall prevention would uh, focus on strength, coordination and endurance. To decrease the risk of injury, you can think of novel technologies such as the use of um, hip protectors. Commercially available product at the moment is those fall detection methods. So that could be a pendant worn sensor, but there are also wrist worn sensors. And those uh, give out an alarm to either a call sensor or to your family members or your neighbors, the ones that can help you get up. So what are some of the things that Rob's mom can do in her home to help prevent falls? Uh, getting rid of rocks over which you might trip, uh, getting rid of a little bit of clutter, uh, making sure that everything is um, laid out nicely so that you can actually walk th safely through the room. Things like making sure that there is uh, sufficient light lighting, lighting is also important. And a lot of times people also install those grab bars to make sure that they have something to hold on to. Thank you so much for helping us today. Your information was so useful. You had a chance to watch some of the videos and the interviews that we did with some of our experts. Let's start with the interview with Captain Doug Booth. Getting a third party to come in and maybe help facilitate. Uh, he mentioned a, a nurse with some mental health experience that comes in and kind of helps you sort and, and get rid of things. And I think that would be a major help. It's important that when they let me loose out there again, I don't start carting it all home. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about fall prevention. What did yeah. you think of some of those things that Kim said? Um, the carpets here are quite old, so we've covered them up with, you know, throw rugs all over the place. So we're going to get in uh, wood floors so that we don't have any rugs. <laughs> That'll be the best. Uh, I think the fall alert kind of necklace thing is a great idea. And then some of the other innovations, like the, the kind of impact short and other devices along those lines, I think are very interesting just to preventing a fall. I'll be glad when I can uh, actually get into the bathtub. There's all the grips there, and because I was afraid before. <laughs> I want to really thank you for letting us into your home and into your lives for this past little while. I think it will be really helpful for other people to hear about what you've learned and about all these issues because they're very common to a lot of people. I think uh, we've learned a lot. Great. Good luck. I'm glad we were able to find some practical information that would be useful for Rob and Christine. Many people experience similar challenges and I hope they will find the information to be helpful as well. Please remember to follow our social media accounts for additional information and caregiver resources. I'm Dr. Yvette Liu. See you next time.